there, and it's an excellent uh, primer on what this subject's all about. Uh, we're going to have now uh, Pastor William uh, Van Cleek, and he's going to be speaking on the New School Field Bible. Some of you have been bothered about that, and you have questions on it, and he's going to take us uh, to that uh, route right now. And, and Lord, bless you, Lord bless you, Brother Van Cleek, as you speak to us. appreciate this opportunity. I was asked to speak in the morning session, and uh, I did ask uh, Dr. Wade if my son could take that hour, and I did not expect to speak, but uh, I will try to abbreviate some of the things that I think might be important to you. I think the uh, thing that uh, in a workshop like this I, I hate to do, and that is to read things, but I will say that in the new school field, I believe that uh, in many things that they wrote within the preface and so forth, it uh, tells us what they wanted to do. In other words, I'm finding, as I think we're noticing in these workshops, that uh, our adversaries are not shy in telling us what they're trying to do. Um, there may be in this particular uh, revision, translation, they call it a revision, uh, greater deception. My, I, we've always had the old school field, and my wife wore out on her a few years ago, so just before I got into this uh, debate, I went out and bought her a nice school field. It said new. I expected it to be like the old. <laughs> And I didn't read the preface, and I didn't ask anybody about it. And it, I thought, well, it'll be changed a little bit. Matter of fact, uh, in 1967, I was at Moody Founders Week, back before I got my heart right with the Lord, I was down Moody. And uh, uh, Wilbur Smith was there, and I understand he was one of the translators of this particular edition. And uh, he was in a workshop there with probably 300 pastors. And they were really asking him some very pointed questions about the new Schofield uh, reference Bible. And, and he didn't mention anything in that time period except the fact that the main reason there was a revision was that Dr. Schofield had not written hardly anything on eschatology, that is, the doctrine of last things. Uh, and it's true. If you have an old Schofield, there are not very many notes in it about last things. Uh, a lot of notes in the Old Testament and so forth. And of course, for those, I don't think there's anyone here like that, but in my own church, I still had some people uh, that thought that the notes were somehow part of the Bible. So just to get that out of our mind, the notes obviously are not the Word of God, but uh, they're very helpful. Probably I have been helped myself by the notes in the old school field as a young Christian as much as anything. Very, very good notes. And uh, uh, I don't know how the rest of you feel about that. And so when I purchased this Bible, I could remember back, and I could sort of echo way back those years past, I can remember Wilbur Smith saying, and by the way, who was not a fundamentalist, but nevertheless I was listening to what he said. He said, the reason they updated the Schofield was that it was still uh, a King James Bible, and it was to place within it uh, additional notes, mainly in the area of eschatology. Uh, then I started to find out about what it really was about, and someone said, did you read the preface? And I didn't read it. I had already purchased the Bible. I'm going to read a little bit to you and then just make some comments in these few moments I have. Now, if you have one in the introduction, most of the time we don't read this. I suppose most of us do not read it. It says, more than a half century has passed since the first edition of the reference Bible was issued just as there was need for improvement eight years after the original publication of this work. And let me say that obviously there was a revision, but it was a true revision. They held to the same type of technique, and they didn't make the changes that are obviously in this one. And, and I think that's deceptive in this statement. He's saying that we're changing it now the same way it was changed from the first to the second edition. And I think that's deceptive. That's not what they did. And I can't go any more on that, but that's one of the things that strikes me. 
those who oppose us are often not truthful, and you've heard that from a number of these men, in what they say. They, they demand that we be truthful. They demand that we cross every T and dot every I, but they allow themselves a great deal of freedom uh, to mismanage the translation or the, or the updating work. Uh, let me go on. So he's inferred here that this is being changed in the same manner as the first revision was. Uh, then he says, not that the Bible has changed, but that additional light has been thrown upon the scriptures by textual scholarship, archaeological discoveries, and developments on a worldwide scale in the light of Bible prophecy. So he's saying, no, the Bible hasn't changed, but in some way these things are supposed to give us uh, more insight into uh, the truth of the Word of God. That may be so in some areas, but certainly would not change the words of the Bible, the words of the wording of the Bible. Now, I'm going to, um, um, obviously this is too long to read, and uh, I want to go over, if you if you happen to have one with you, and I, I feel even a little bad even having this up here, uh, teaching out of it, but I thought it would be better than trying to have two of them here. And uh, later later on in the, in the, uh, the Bible itself, in 1 Chronicles 11, and... Uh, 72, 1 Chronicles 11, there is a, a footnote that gives us a little bit better idea of, of what the uh, translators were supposed to do. Now, if you happen to have one of these and you want to write this down, it's page 472 and 473 in the New Schofield Reference. Under footnote 2, which deals with verse chapter 11 and verse 11, it says here, in copying manuscripts, mistakes in numbers sometimes occur. Many disagreements uh, between the numbers are uh, in, Sa in Samuel and Kings, and those in Chronicles are alleged. Actually, out of the approximately 150 instances of parallel numbers in these books, fewer than one sixth disagree. In two cases, a number, a different number is given for the age of the kings, and so forth. Now let me jump over to page 473. When numbers seem clearly to disagree, it is generally best to keep an open mind unless evidence is available on which to make a decision. Now that's fine. I, I think that's a fair, probably a fair statement. God gave us a Bible free from error in the original manuscripts. In its preservation, through many generations of recopying, he providentially kept it from serious error, although he permitted a few scribal mistakes. Now, some of the some of the men uh, are not this kind, but we have here, in a sense, a Bible that is less of a threat. On the other hand, it is more of a threat. Uh, this Bible, I believe, perhaps more than any other, got people thinking they were reading the King James without any changes. Uh, placed within it statements like this that are partly true, partly false, which is the greatest error. It's, you know, all pastors use the idea of the bucket of water with the one drop of poison. I mean, you don't need a lot of error to contaminate it. And I think it got people thinking. For him, my own view is it may have got people thinking more that there could be some slight changes without the hurting of the text. And then he says, the small portions and numbers where there is disagreement testifies to the scrupulous care with which the Bible manuscripts were copied. They, that there are some divergences should warn us to compare Scripture with Scripture, and so forth. I, I just thought, in all fairness, I would read that much uh, as to their thinking at that time. Now, it, what I did not read to you is they very, they, they tell us they're going to change some of the, some of the adjectives. Uh, in the opening preface. They, they tell us they're going to take some of the words and put them in brackets. They tell us that. In other words, if you were to buy this Bible and you read it, uh, you'd be forewarned that they are going to do that. However, as you read through the Bible and the changing of these words, no more warning is given. Um, I've been reading through this to get ready for this year. I've been using this for my devotions. And uh, it, I don't know how Dr. Wade does it, to wade through all that error that he has to so he can find out the truth uh, when he studies, because uh, 
I tried reading it in our family devotions. My kids won't let me read it. They said, I'll be reading it and the word will change. And they'll say, oh, that's not right, Dad. And they get 